to open up the process that is going on right now. Uh, that is the process for the general plan and the community plan updates. Um, a couple things just to kind of describe uh, why we started to do the outreach to the neighborhood, neighborhood councils. Um, it became, um, it came to our attention around May that uh, the open space element, uh, which is one of the uh, critical elements uh, found in the general plan, um, they, the planning department scheduled four, uh, four, four meetings with the working group. Uh, three of those took place behind closed doors. Uh, there wasn't any sort of community outreach, community input, collaborative spirit. Um, so when we found that out, we reached out to neighborhood councils and asked them uh, to see if they can write a letter of support encouraging uh, the city to open up this process. Uh, thankfully, they did open up the fourth, the fourth uh, open space element meeting. Uh, so we thought that was a success. We spoke with some of the folks uh, from the city and they said that they were going to make adjustments to, to uh, very much indeed open this process up. Um, unfortunately, uh, there hasn't been any real follow through uh, regarding that. Uh, so we continue to reach out to not just neighborhood councils, but other community leaders uh, to uh, continue encouraging, urging uh, the city to open up this process. The reason this matters so much is because this is the first time in a generation that the city of Los Angeles has this opportunity uh, to have their ideas, have their visions, have their voice incorporated and integrated in this very important process. Uh, the general plan updates and the community plan updates touch on every single aspect uh, that every Angelino is, is concerned about in one way or another, whether it be environmental, economic, displacement, all of these things can be discussed, we think, in a collaborative fashion, collaborative spirit, uh, with city, between city officials and the, the constituents they represent. Um, we've not seen this. Uh, I myself uh, was curious about the technical phase, uh, which occurred uh, in the past several months um, regarding, the, after the scoping meeting, this part of the process, after the scoping meeting, uh, we were trying to find out what was going on in this technical phase, which typically you are supposed to be able to uh, get that information through a California Public Records Act request. Uh, I searched uh, what, the places that I needed to go to, and uh, none of this information uh, was available to me. Um, so we don't know what happened. The, the community members don't know what, what's going on uh, in these meetings. Uh, essentially, there's a closed door culture, uh, top down uh, sort of methodology in uh, getting the, the, these updates um, implemented. We, in looking at other cities, uh, and I think some of you folks have seen this map that I've, that I've pressed around, that I've pushed around, or passed out, excuse me. Um, we look at other season, cities and see what, what works, and maybe we can incorporate that here in Los Angeles to just give one quick example. Um, in Pasadena, in the year 2004, uh, they had their general plan update. And in the course of seven months, they had 55 open, collaborative, participa uh, active participation type meetings, workshops, symposiums, Q and A's with the constituents. This is the Pasadena and the Fishes. 55 meetings uh, over the course of seven months. Uh, Pasadena is a population of 130,000 at the time, something like that. Uh, Boyle Heights, on its own, has a population of about 90,000. Uh, this process of updating the general plan here in Los Angeles uh, is, is, is well within that seven month range, if not more, and we've had one open space meeting. Uh, one that was open to the public. Uh, this is very concerning to us. Uh, we know that uh, communities, 
uh, the, the city in general will function in a much healthier way when we include science, facts, research, and that messy democracy, the democracy part that, that goes hand in hand with that process. But we're not seeing that. We're seeing a top down. We'd like to see a bottom up. We'd like to see an integration. We'd like to see a coming together between city officials, city planning department, and community stakeholders to work together on a shared vision uh, to, to improve and uh, take care of the stakeholders uh, that live and reside uh, here and flourish here in, in Boyle Heights. Um, so that's the, the nature of the letters to have, uh, uh, an, we're requesting to have an open process where we're having a robust community engagement um, arrangement uh, and process. Um, and so that's why, uh, that's why I'm here and that's, that's the gist of the letter. Uh, the letter itself, uh, just one last thing, um, does point to uh, what is, uh, some of you folks may know this, the California State Guidelines. The state of California has guidelines and they, uh, in those guidelines, they stress that in the initial stages, uh, there needs to be a robust uh, community input uh, process. And then even after that, throughout the entire process, uh, there needs to be a robust uh, active participant uh, process between, again, uh, the stakeholders and, and the, uh, the city officials. Um, uh, back to passing in and just to wrap that up real quick. Uh, after those 55 meetings, uh, what became very clear were, was that the Pasadena constituency was very concerned about two main things. Uh, they wanted targeted development. They liked development. Uh, they just wanted to be smart. And they wanted to preserve green space. Um, I'll go ahead and pass out a, a little flyer that I've been making out. Um, there's a map uh, based off of a USC study uh, it showed because of that collaboration in 2004 between Pasadena city officials and their constituents, they were able to save their tree canopy. And once you look at this map, you'll see the difference between uh, that collaborative nature and what, and what can come of that uh, versus uh, the opposite. And, and that's what we've seen in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, we've lost, there's been a decimation of, of tree cover and, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture and other uh, sources have studied this. this. This has a direct impact on life expectancy. This has a direct impact on family health, human health. Um, and so we want that to be integrated into, into this plan. Okay, so Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess let's get a part of this committee and just move forward to the neighborhood council meeting. meeting. Um, we will include the Spanish version of this as well. Yes. Uh, cool. If it does. I'll put it together. I'm putting it together tonight. Okay. But anyways, we first need to decide what we want to do with this. Um, Ernie, are you had the biggest concern regarding the language before? Uh, yeah, my concern is just the, about the tone, and you know, I and I think that's that's up to this this body and and the neighborhood council to decide what tone they want to carry with um, the officials that we're supposed to work in partnership with. Um, and that's very different from an organization that, you know, is, is uh, has, doesn't have the vision that we have in, in working in that type of partnership with, with the public officials in the city. Um, and so um, I support the general spirit of this letter, but I would, you know, kind of change a few words uh, just to strike a different tone. That would be my, my opinion, but, you know, I don't know how everyone else here feels. Uh, yeah, I have a few edits as well, uh, but I think that I'd like to have a motion to discuss and possibly approve a letter to go to the general board. Hi, I'm Veronica Polanco. Um, I'm a resident here in Boyle Heights. Um, I agree with this because I recently started to get more involved, and when I found out about this, I tried to reach out to family members who have been long-time residents here. It's my uncle's. Um, and they had no idea what's going on. So I think there needs to be, aside from transparency, like more education to the community, because it feels like at this point we're playing catch up. Um, the plan is pretty much set. It seems like they've been working on this for a while, and there's a lot of community members who have no idea what's going on, and that's very concerning. For instance, this meeting, I, I tried signing up. I'm, you know, I'm pretty good with the internet, so I've Googled, I signed up for listservs, 
for the Planning LA Instagram, the Facebook, and there was no mention of them being here. The only reason I knew was I happened to be at Eastside Soul event, and there was a specific registration for it, so I got an email. But if that's it, how would my mom find out? So I think there needs to be more, even the bhplan.org website doesn't have these current meetings listed. And it's an easy way that if someone's Googling it, it would show up and people could be aware where they can come get informed regarding the plan. So you're talking specifically about the community? The community plan, yeah, they have a specific website that it leaks out from the city website. Okay. Do you have any other public comments? Yo, yo vengo de, de uh, Pico Garden y Las Casitas. También es una comunidad dentro de Huevo High. Ahí es uh, Las Casitas y uh, Aliso. Y de vivienda pública. Estoy uh, deciding public uh, housing. Eh, nosotros estamos uh, luchando a uh, muchas cosas dentro de la comunidad. Una de ellas es exactamente todos los negocios que se están abriendo eh, de las galerías. Y, y ustedes han aprobado muchas cosas que están pasando ahí. Pero We are very involved in everything that pertains to the community. And I wanted to talk um, here this evening about the businesses. Y ustedes lo están tomando en cuenta las comunidades. I don't think that you have approved or some of the businesses, but you can take the residents into account. Muchos residentes no saben lo que está pasando alrededor de Boyle High. Many residents don't know what's going on in Boyle High. Y yo creo que ya es tiempo que Boyle High tenga la oportunidad de conocerlos a ustedes, de quiénes son, qué es el trabajo que hacen, qué es lo que uh, hacen dentro de las comunidades, porque uh, mucha gente no los conoce. I think that the residents. Entonces, uh, es muy importante que they... nosotros, que ustedes, tengan el apoyo. Yes, um, I would like for the community to know who you are and what you do as a neighborhood council. Nosotros necesitamos apoyo de ustedes. We need your no, support. Que no estén pasando las, las propuestas que los negocios les están presentando a ustedes. Porque nosotros, las comunidades, somos las personas más afectadas. Uh, we also need to be aware of uh, the business activity. Uh, there are some proposals that have been approved by you that I think that the community uh, would benefit if they would know what's going on with the businesses as well. Nosotros tenemos 20 años luchando por la vivienda. We are directly affected by all the decisions that are taken in uh, uh, for Paul Heights. Nosotros hemos trabajado con otros concejales en la limpieza. We have been working on housing issues um, to clean up the streets. Hemos mejorado las calles. I think that the streets now are uh, better. They're las en las escuelas. We have also done work in the schools. Muchas cosas que han pasado en la comunidad. Nosotros hemos sido una comunidad muy activa. We are very good, uh, active community here in Paul Heights. Y ahora se están, está, estamos limpiando nuestra comunidad para que vengan otro tipo de, de gente a nuestra comunidad. No lo veo all, justo. All this work that we have been doing and cleaning the, the streets, and now other people are coming here and are benefit, benefiting of all the work that we have done, and I don't think that's fair. Nosotros necesitamos el apoyo de ustedes. We are being displaced. We need your support. Tienen que considerar la voz de la comunidad. Please listen to the community. Um, I, I thank you for your comment, but this is not on the topic that we're talking about right now. So uh, what I would like to just say is that the Neighborhood Council is made up of people from within the community, and what we do is we listen to our neighbors about what issues they would like the city to discuss or to be heard upon. Um, that's where we get all, all our topics from. If there's something that concerns the, the our, our neighbors and uh, friends, 
uh, in regards to housing, liquor licenses, or subjects of that matter, or general general items we hear them in committees, and then we bring them to the board to discuss there, and then based on the opinion of people who come to these meetings, based, based upon our neighbors, we make our decisions to bring them, to represent our neighbors to the city. Um, and it is vital that our neighbors either talk to us, members of the board, or members of the committee, so that we can be informed about what you guys want. So thank you for, for coming and, and speaking to us. But it is not a on topic that we are currently discussing on our agenda. Um, we are talking about the uh, transparency in the general plan. So if we have any com any public comment on that particular agenda item, um, um, please uh, speak on that item. I'm just going to say in Spanish. Oh, uh, lo que le quería decir es que sí hay muchos cambios que ahorita pasando en la comunidad y le quiero urgir que siga viniendo a estas juntas. Um, entiendo que siente que queremos ayudar a la comunidad, pero nosotros no podemos saber lo que todos están pensando. So, viniendo, viniendo a estas juntas, usted nos puede informar de lo que está pasando y darnos su opinión en lo que está. Y so, esta carta es lo que está tratando de explicar: es que por la ciudad de Los Ángeles están construyendo un plan y nosotros queremos están pidiendo que abran, esa, abran esas juntas para nosotros también poder ir y dar nuestras opiniones porque si es nuestra comunidad nos va a afectar a nosotros como usted estaba diciendo por supuesto el tema de que, que, con que quería hablar vamos a discutirlo en, en, en la siguiente en cuatro so, si va a poder uh, dar okay. su opinión aquí, sí. okay. Después de este asunto. Sí. Ok, yo nomás les quería decir que por favor cuando este, uh, tengan uh, estas juntas, este, uh, hagan llegar un flyer a la comunidad de Pico Gardens. Ahí está la oficina en la calle 4 y, y este Iglés. Entonces pueden llevar un flyer para este, que nosotros nos demos cuenta, ¿verdad? Nosotros somos de la mesa directiva del RAC, que representamos a los 300 familias. Entonces nosotros, este, allí por medio de eso, o nos pueden llevar uno a la oficina también, que está ahí en ese mismo lugar. Okay. I just would like to um, comment on outreach. Uh, I am uh, from Pico uh, Gardens and uh, on fourth. And ¿dónde pueden llegar los volantes? In the Oficina de Pico okay. Gardens. We yeah, we would like to have uh, flyers for the residents of Pico Gardens. We represent 400 uh, families. And you can drop the flyers at the office, at the RAC office. We're also um, board members um, of the RAC. Okay. Now, the and I will say the neighborhood council is working on a flyer with all the meeting information um, and we will be happy to bring it to you once it's approved. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and start the, delivering the agendas to, or at least the agenda for this meeting to the office, and I'll recommend that the other committees do it as well. But, that, that's, that's it. Um, but we do need to move on if this is not on the, the agenda item. Por favor, en inglés y en español. Mucha gente habla español ahí, entonces por un lado inglés y por el otro español. We would like to receive the agendas in both languages. I need somebody to volunteer to help do that. Okay. 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 All right, so seeing that we've been off a topic, uh, I don't believe there's any more general public comment on this. Let's post general public comment and move to board comment. So if you guys had uh, certain corrections that you wanted to make. Or... Yeah, I'll start. Um, I think at least in the two months ago when we had this last uh, discussion on this topic, I think that there was a lot of general support for transparency um, 
in the community planning process. So I think that there's a lot of support for this. Uh, very specifically, I want to say that there is an incorrection that we are named as the Rampart Village oh. Neighborhood Council. Oh, that's uh, so that needs to be fixed. My name is Karen Rishi. I'm here from the Department of City Planning. I'm one of the planners on the community plan update. This fall, we're gonna be having two open houses. Some of you may have seen the flyers already. We have some at the back as well, and we're gonna be distributing them throughout the community. Um, and we can email them out to anyone who is on our email list. And we have a sign-up sheet too, in case anyone wants to add their contact information after the presentation. We'll make sure that everyone gets copies of those and is uh, aware of the upcoming meetings. We're having one on October 24th in the evening at Roosevelt High School, and then another one on Saturday, October 28th, during the daytime at Boyle Heights City Hall across the street. As some of you may know, the Boyle Heights Community Plan has been in the process for about 10 years now. Um, throughout that process, we've done a number of outreach. Um, we've done a lot of outreach. We did some outreach back in 2006 to 2009, and then once the plan kind of geared up again in 2013, we held a series of workshops and focus groups in the community to focus on topics such as housing, mobility. Um, we did some planning 101 trainings. And then in 2014, we had more workshops to hear from the community what kinds of things you guys wanted to see as we update the community plan. So the community plan is one of the elements of the general plan. And the reason that the community plan is important is because it helps kind of give a guide for all the future development that will come into a community plan area. As we've been doing this outreach, after we took all the notes from 2013, 2014, um, we went back to, or we went back and we drafted our plan, we've created new zoning tools. There is a comprehensive citywide zoning code update that's occurring, it's called Recode. Some of you may have heard of this project. So we will be incorporating new zoning in the entire plan area through Recode, and then we're also gonna be releasing a draft plan which will have goals and policies guiding uh, the future of the community plan area at the October open houses. Here's an overview of what the process is for a community plan. So you can see at the beginning, there's some background research, um, some initial community input that goes into it. Right now, we are having our first round of open houses, which is going to be this fall. And then early next year, we anticipate releasing our draft EIR, which are, is our environmental impact report. It's the environmental analysis document for the plan. And then after that, we'll also have another open house that will have a public hearing, but we'll take pu public comment on the plan, um, and we'll have a comment period for the draft EIR as well. After that public hearing, we'll be starting to go through the adoption process, we'll go to the City Planning Commission, we'll go through City Council. So today we wanted to give you an overview of some of the overarching topics that we've heard throughout our outreach process, and tell you some of the tools and some of the policies that we have to address those. The first topic that we'll cover is housing. So Boyle Heights needs to have a diverse supply of housing types and different affordability levels throughout the community. And we've been trying to think of how to creatively create some kind of um, affordable housing in the community. So what we've come up with is an incentive system. And what that means is that in exchange for providing affordable housing at different levels in the community, um, a developer or a property owner can ask for additional development rights such as height or FAR or density if they are providing that affordable housing. Last November, Measure JJJ passed, which was approved by city voters, um, and it was a citywide initiative that created a benefit system just like this one, except it applies at a citywide level. It gives us some room to tailor the incentives to fit the community. So what we've done is we have adopted our own incentive system for the entirety of Boyle Heights, so that the incentives that are being given away are more appropriate with the character of the neighborhood instead of things that were developed to apply at a citywide level. Another thing that we've done with our new zoning code is we've created a new zone for the majority of the residential areas that are currently built out. A lot of the properties in, in the residential areas of Boyle Heights right now are built all the way to the back property line. There's an additional unit, there's a garage, um, the whole building goes all the way to the back. That's actually not permitted under the existing zoning on most of those properties right now. So what we've done is we've created um, a new zone that does accommodate for that. And what we're hoping that can encourage is the addition of another unit on properties that already have um, a building at the front of the lot without needing to demolish that existing building. The areas that we're primarily um, incentivizing the affordable housing are focused around transit. You can see here around First and Soto Station, Indiana Station, and then along Whittier Boulevard as well. 
throughout our outreach, we've also heard that neighborhood character is very important, and preserving the character that exists in Boyle Heights today is very important. So, a couple ways that we are trying to achieve that through the plan is by, as I mentioned, maintaining the neighborhood scale. Um, we have created zoning that mirrors what's on the ground today in most of the residential areas. That includes the same height limits that exist on those residential areas today. Um, we're trying to kind of keep that the same way that it can be built out right now under the existing zoning. Um, we've also created a new use district. And what that is, is it's the part of the zone that um, regulates what kinds of uses you can put on your property. So throughout the residential areas of Boyle Heights, there's a lot of tienditas or other small businesses that exist in what are actually residential zones. And those are actually also not allowed today. Those are older businesses. They're, they have non-conforming rights. So what we've done is we've created this use district that in these residential areas actually allows for the small amount of small business to occur. Um, there are standards that go along with it. It would have to be under a certain size, such as 2,500 square feet, to really fit in with the neighborhood character. And um, they would have to be located on corners, and there may be some operational conditions, such as hours of operation or other things, to make sure that it fits in with the residential neighborhood around it. We've also created um, a conservation design area in the area you can see here, highlighted in orange. All of the orange areas were um, identified as potentially historic under Survey LA, which goes out and identifies historic properties um, in the city. And so we've created certain design elements, such as requiring a porch, requiring a certain amount of windows on the building, so that any new um, developments that would go into this area would have to be developed in a way that fits in with the surrounding character in that historic area. We've done something similar um, along Cesar Chavez, along the historic Brooklyn corridor between uh, Cummings and Mott Street. So along here, as everyone's familiar, I'm sure there's a lot of the brick buildings. They have, they all have similar window types. Um, there's window trim around them, and it's all very small shop front style businesses. So we've created an overlay there that can require certain design elements, such as you see here. Here's an example from what the new zoning code may look like. Vertical expressions, horizontal expressions, required window depth, and entry definition. Again, this is to make sure that any new development that comes into that area is mirroring what's already there and doesn't just stand out um, like a sore thumb. Um, jobs in the economy. Throughout our process, we've also heard that uh, preserving the industrial land for jobs and encouraging small business are very important uh, to Boyle Heights community. So we have a couple of different sets of policies that address this. We are preserving the industrial land for jobs. The way we're doing that is in the southern industrial area, south of Olympic, where it's a lot of the heavier industry right now. We are keeping that the same. It's going to be warehouse style buildings, so some of the same heavy industrial uses um, that are allowed today, and building forms that can still support that. However, on the river side, um, the area between 1st and 7th, um, adjacent to the river, we've created an innovation district. So it removes some of those heavier industrial uses and still allows for the lighter industrial uses or clean industry, but still doesn't, it's not allowing for housing, but it still allows for a mix of those warehouse types and then some of the buildings, building types that you see along Anderson now, the older brick buildings, there's, it allows for those types of buildings to occur as well. We also have policies in our plan to support street vending. Um, and then we've also introduced a new tool into our zoning code where on some of the specific corridors, we are actually going to create a maximum tenant size to prevent some of the big box stores from coming in um, and really promote small business along those corridors. Environmental justice and sustainability is another um, big key topic throughout our plan. Um, the recent adoption of Cleanup Greenup um, if some people are familiar, it's a pilot program ordinance that was applied in Boyle Heights and Wilmington and Pacoima, um, and it was to create better adjacency standards between industrial and residential uses um, and put certain development standards so that the residential buildings or sensitive uses um, would have to use certain building materials to make sure that the air is being filtered from freeways, from the toxic industrial uses, etc. So what we're working to do is we're working to actually take that ordinance and put it into the zoning code so that every zone actually has that built in. It's not a separate ordinance that someone has to go find. These standards are just part of the actual zone on the ground. We also have policies to improve compatibility between industrial land and neighborhoods. So going off of what Cleanup Freedom did. So you can see here, 
This is an example of what the zoning looks like. So the orange is the residential neighborhood. This is Olympic Boulevard. The blue is the heavier industrial area. So as I mentioned, all of this right now is heavy industrial. This is residential neighborhoods. We've created a buffer zone along Olympic. So mobility and connectivity is very important to Well Heights. There's a lot of people who take transit, who walk, who bike, and we want to make sure that we're encouraging um, safety enhancements for these. So. <coughs> One thing we're proposing is transit, enhancement on, trans, transit enhancements on Soto Street. Soto Street was identified as a safe routes to school, um, which means there's a number of schools along it. They want to make sure that there's better uh, transportation, bicycle, and pedestrian infrastructure for students to get to school more safely. So we want to encourage those as well as other community initiatives such as um, such as the Great Streets Initiative, I know Proyecto Pasada has been working a lot with them, um, and we want to make sure that there's increased uh, bicycle and pedestrian safety on the high injury networks that were identified in Vision Zero. And these are streets that the city identified at a citywide level have the highest amount of pedestrian and bicycle fatalities and injuries compared to how many people are traveling on that street. And um, there's a couple of those in Boyle Heights as well, Lorena, um, Soto, Cesar Chavez, um, and a couple other ones. So we want to make sure that we're encouraging um, enhancing safety for everyone who's trying to get around the community. We also have policies in our plan that encourage greening alleyways. So there's a lot of alleyways in Boyle Heights that connect, but we want to make sure that those are improved and have better um, infrastructure to facilitate pedestrians actually using them to get around the community. Public realm and outdoor amenity space. So as I was just mentioning with the Riverside, right here's an example of what one type of outdoor amenity space can look like. So along the Riverside, what we're doing is we're actually requiring in this area that has a green background immediately adjacent to the river, we're requiring a higher amount of outdoor amenity space so that any project that happens there would actually have to provide um, more amenity space than, say, on the corner of First and Soto would have to, to make sure that there's more accessibility to the river, more space for people to enjoy the river. Um, we also have something through the new zoning code that is called uh, the frontages. So what this does, you can see here, there's two different types here. This middle one's the warehouse. So this is for like a larger industrial, large format building. And then there's the shop front, which is more for a main street corridor. This is a new tool that actually regulates the facade of the building. It's how the building meets the street. So we can require things like a certain amount of transparency, how many windows you have on your ground floor, so when you're walking you can actually see into a business. Um, and then it can regulate how often you have to provide an entrance. So as I was saying before on Cesar Chavez, um, we can require having a, an entrance every 50 feet so that any new projects would have to fit in with the existing character and make sure that it's very pedestrian accessible. Another thing that we can do with this tool is we can make sure that the building is actually at the street front and we can prevent having large surface parking lots right next to the sidewalk and avoid pedestrians from having to walk from the sidewalk all the way across the parking lot to get to a business. Finally, this is an overview of what the new zoning string will look like. So what zoning is, is it regulates what can be done on your lot. So right now, every parcel has a zone um, that tells you how much you can build, what you can put there. The way our new zoning string works is the first bracket is the physical buildings, and then the second bracket regulates what can happen inside that building. So the form is a district that will tell you where on your lot your building can be placed, and how tall it can be, and how big it can be. And then your frontage, as we just saw, will show you how your building has to meet the street, what kind of frontage it has, what kind of facade it has. The use will tell you what uses are allowed. So as we mentioned with the with the Tiendicas going into the residential areas, um, that's, that would happen in this use area. It would tell you you can do residential, plus you can do you know, these couple small commercial businesses that meets these rules. And the density tells you how many units you can put on the site. So at the end of the day, every property will have this full zoning string that will tell you everything that you can do on your site. So again, we'd like to reiterate that we're having two open houses um, in October. We will have the same material at both, but we want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to attend one of them and to come back a second time if you want to learn more. Um, we have more at the back, and um, we are all here for any questions. So at, uh, real quick, at the open houses, they'll be able to ask 
more questions. Absolutely. At the end, right? so, yeah, at the open houses, we will have a larger presentation. We'll have boards with more details. Um, we'll be releasing a draft of our actual plan with the goals and policies that we've been developing. Um, there will be a lot more detail and a lot more time. I know we're running short on time tonight, but a lot more time to ask questions okay. and talk more. So, on your website. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This flyer will be posted tomorrow, and the presentation will be posted tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So, because we've got about roughly 10 minutes or so, um, we're just going to go board comment and public comment at the same time. Uh, just wait till you're being your call before um, you ask your question. So, do you have any hands? Okay. Uh, I forgot your name. What is this one? Lourdes Alvaran. Lourdes. Ajá. Mire, ustedes planean todo muy bonito, pero nosotros, este, la comunidad, ya tenemos este, nuestras costumbres. Nosotros, por ejemplo, los que venden elotes, si van a ir a pagar un lugar, ¿a cómo nos va a costar el elote? Nosotros estamos acostumbrados a comprar barato y en la calle, y a comer barato y en la calle. Esos espacios, los que venden en la calle no van a poder pagar. Okay, I think that you are painting a very a pretty picture, but I can tell you that I can tell you that um, we in Boom Heights, it's part of the culture that we go out there, we go to the street vendors, and we buy a lot of corn from the cop, and it's cheap because they don't have to go pay anything anywhere else because if they, the vendors have to go and rent a space, then they're going to have to sell their merchandise or at a higher price. But we can't afford that. Y luego también en las viviendas accesibles, este, yo conozco una señora que fue a aplicar aquí a las que están aquí en la Goyo y le hablaron que calificaba. Entonces ella vio el estándar, ella estaba a la mitad del estándar de, de que calificaba para la vivienda y di, le dijeron que no, que no calificaba y, este, y, y luego la muchacha le habló a otra señora que había vivienda des, disponible. Entonces no es para nuestra comunidad. In regards to affordable housing, I know someone who went to apply at one of these places, so-called um, affordable housing, and first day she was told that she was eligible. Then when she went back, they told her that she was not eligible. If they, she was like in the middle bracket, so I don't know what happened there with the um, income. Entonces esas viviendas no son accesibles para nuestra comunidad, porque la misma gente que está ahí rechaza a la gente de la comunidad. So basically, the uh, units that you're offering, they're not, uh, uh, the community does not have access to those units. And even the people who live in this building, even though they, they don't have um, affordable units, even the people who live there, they don't want to see us. They don't want us. Uh, I have a question. Should we respond now or should we respond? How, however you want to do it, it's just... Yeah, 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 we'll take other comments. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm bad. I can't remember the name. Señora, su nombre. Ana. 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 A mí me gustaría saber de qué manera va a impactar a la comunidad ese tipo de cambio. How is the community going to be, um, it, how is this a change going to impact the community? O solamente usted, ustedes planean sin, sin saber el impacto que va a causar en la comunidad. ¿Cómo, no, cómo desarrollan ustedes este plan? How do you know what the impact will be in the community? Have you done any research? Uh, no, we ustedes piensan que la comunidad está eh, preparada para hacer este cambio. Do you think that the community is ready to go through these changes? Porque esto, esto se llama aburguesamiento. Entonces lo que hace el aburguesamiento es que atrae otro tipo, otro tipo de clase de gente que viene a nuestra comunidad. Boyohan es una comunidad pobre. Lo dijeron ahorita. No hay mucha gente que, que gana 40 mil, 60 mil dólares al año. Y lo que nosotros necesitamos en Boyohai es vivienda. Queremos vivienda 
que sea accesible para estas personas. Nosotros estamos pensando mejorar Boyo High, pero con nuestra misma gente. Crecer juntos. I think that Buscar really soluciones would like para, is para to... esto, para mejorar Boyo High. Gracias. Gracias. Ok, I could say what you said. Um, I think that we need to, um, we have worked again really hard to make some good changes in the community, but you are bringing people that are actually from the community, and uh, all the work that we have been doing, this would be, I, I think that it would be for the people in the community, mm -hmm. not let other people come in there. We don't make $40,000, we don't make $60,000. You're talking about a different uh, the ink level. They move here and they want to have the tools. Um, uh, este, yo también estoy uh, preocupada por todos esos desarrollos. Este, nosotros ya estamos afectados porque a, a nosotros ya se nos han quitado las, uh, las, uh, los pequeños negocios donde vivimos. Ya no hay pequeños negocios. ¿Por qué? Porque han comprado otras personas y lo están rentando muy alto. I'm also concerned about these new developments. And we also, I have seen that we have lost a lot of small businesses. Entonces, uh, pues nosotros sí, sí estamos, uh, sí queremos mejoría en Boyo Heights, pero como dicen la, las compañeras, que sea con nuestra gente, y nuestra gente es de muy bajos recursos, y nosotros uh, hay, uh, sabemos que hay muchas familias, hay ma, uh, más de 7000 familias que necesitan vivienda, pero vivienda para la gente que gana de 25 para abajo, porque hay muchas personas que están jubiladas, pensionadas, que no agarran ni 18 mil. Entonces, este, nosotros queremos vivienda para esa gente, para to... nuestra gente. Okay, we want to, um, of course we want this place to be better, but we also want um, the community to enjoy the new changes. Nosotros, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have, uh, we need housing, but we need housing that we can, um, we can afford. You're talking about people who, uh, that make $25,000, sometimes $18,000. Sometimes people are on a fixed income. So the, the affordable housing, what you consider as affordable housing, that is not affordable to this community. Um, okay, we need to move on to the next person. Um, um, yeah, like where in the plan, like talk about the, the need to preserve our stock of, of rent stabilized housing. I mean, uh, do you want to and I, I think something that I brought up every step of the way. Okay. I feel like the plan reads more of an extension of downtown LA than an actual program from Boyle Heights. Even in the, the, the community corridors map you put, a lot of the focus is on the west side when there's not much going on in Indiana or the arena in bettering the community. Um, I also think there's a catering to developers that's happening where let's create incentives for them. If they're unwilling to create low income housing, they might not be the right developer for our community. Um, additionally, I feel like you could have hiring issues uh, required of them, like maybe local t local hiring 20%, minorities 15, women, whatever. Um, there's a couple things the plan reads, like let's make this place prettier, nicer, and that's just almost seems like you're trying to attract an outsider like making it more appealing to them to come in, um, like bigger, higher, but there's no written format that's gonna guarantee that the people that are here will stay here and benefit. Um, even Sears Towers, your, your summaries identified um, it as a supermarket desert, but it's not requiring that big building to have a supermarket. Like that's a practical thing that could be written in. Um, also, I think it's limiting where it's all development and transition. Um, versus big ideas like making the neighborhood more green. We have issues with lead, with air pollution, and it's very limited as to what we can do when there's so many progressive ideas out there. Okay. Your turn. You guys are more, you want to get in before we keep close? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, if both of us can go really quickly. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I'd like to see if we can. We're not going to be able to have time to answer. Okay. Right. 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 I'm just seeking this. I really want to let's, let's, respond. Let's, let's, give some questions. Go, go, go ahead. Can I just tell the two minutes? Okay. So um, first off, I think we can address some of the concerns about affordable housing. Um, the incentive program that we mentioned is an optional thing for developers, so if they want to go above and beyond what's essentially there today, um, what's allowed in the zoning today, they would have to provide certain amounts of affordable housing. And the way that we are proposing those ratios actually wouldn't allow for some of the moderate income levels that are uh, included in density bonus and other things, other incentive systems that apply at a citywide level. We are trying to tailor the um, the affordable housing levels to better fit the actual community of Boyle Heights. We understand um, that there's a, a strong need for some of the low and very low income levels in the affordable housing that comes in, and we are proposing um, higher percentage levels than is typically seen in the rest of the city to try to accommodate that better. Um, I think there were a couple questions about that one. Um, Sure, so I'll give a little bit of background too on just what the community plan is. So um, every 10 years or so community plans in the city are updated and so we have a mandate to update this and make sure that the zoning is consistent. The last time that this was updated was 1998 and that's how this effort picked up again in 2006. So we are actually trying to create better zoning that will, when developments come in, will actually encourage people to be providing affordable housing in their projects or providing more green space in their projects or putting more street trees with their projects. So um, right now the zoning doesn't require those kinds of things. So with this plan, it's actually putting in policies where as someone who in the department is reviewing a case, they look to the plan for guidance um, and see what we, the community planners, have developed for the community and they put in certain requirements into those projects to hopefully get better projects at the end of the day. Um, hi, my name is Patricia, and I'm one of the planners working on this plan. And one thing that I wanted to just address in relation to the comments that you made is about who, who are we really planning for when we do this plan, right? Are we planning for people that are already in the community? Are we planning for people outside of the community? Why are we even doing this to begin with? So I think it's it's really important to address that issue. Maybe in the open houses we'll try to make sure we address those issues more specifically. But one of the things I want to make sure everyone understands is the city of LA, one of the reasons we, okay, one of the reasons we do a plan update is to plan for a future the, the population, the growing population. Thank you. That doesn't um, mean sorry, but we, we do have to get up here. That's, 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 that's